Our topic today is be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And that's exactly what we can be. We can certainly be strong in Him. We're going to certainly be strong in Him. Congregation, I want you to kind of stand. I want you to stand with me and sing this song, right? That kind of, that, that was going to help bring this message in. If we call on Jesus, He will answer prayer. If you call on that is beyond our physical scope, that's beyond our mental ability to be able to handle. So when we know when we can call on that name of Jesus, who controls it all, who can speak to the wind and the wind obey, we know that we can be strong in the Lord. Because that's the only way that I know I can be strong. Because I know that don't get me wrong, I like, to, I like to consider myself to be a strong man. I like to consider myself to be a man that has some strength to him. I don't want to be somebody that's to me just considered weak and feeble. But I know that there's men out there that are stronger than me. I know that. I know that there's people out there that have more endurance than me. But, so, but whenever I talk about God himself, and I had to go up against opposition. And I had to go up against a situation. I know there's no one or nothing stronger than the Lord. So I could be strong in the Lord. I could be strong in the Lord. We, go to, we look at Ephesians chapter 10, chapter 6, verse 10. It says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So I know that I could be strong in him. And if I'm going in Him, if I'm keeping my trust in Him, if I'm following after Him, if I'm allowing Him to, to fight my battles, if I'm allowing Him to throw out that lifeline and pull me in, I know that there's nothing that can overtake Him. There's nothing that can overtake God. There's no one that can overtake Him. So I will be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. So we got to understand that. What does that mean? To be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. we got to understand that God brings a lot of power. He has a lot of power. If you begin to look at His Word and read His Word, what He did for the children of Israel, how they came across that Red Sea on dry ground, how He fed a great multitude of people, how He allowed to shut the mouths of the lions in the den with Daniel, how he protected the Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace. He, we could be strong in the Lord. That's the kind of strength that he has. He has a tremendous amount of strength. A tremendous amount of strength. And we need to be strong in him. When all things seem like that they're failing, realize that God can never fail. He can never fail. When everything else around is failing, when different systems are failing, when, whenever they put a system in to suppose to tech, protect against terrorism, whenever they put a system in to suppose to protect against, protect against a certain disease, and all of a sudden these things aren't holding up, they're not lasting. God can never fail. He can never fail. Right? He can never fail. So we got to keep that in mind. We could be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. In His might, when we look at the, the great possibilities of all His power, 
We can be strong in that. So what we got to realize, it's not about the situation. It's not about what we're living in 2016. And we're hearing a lot of speculation. We're hearing a lot of guesswork going on about what's going to happen in the world. What's this going to be? And don't you know, I want to share this with some of you in the congregation here. And I overheard you speaking the other day. I had this sermon already prepared. Right? I had it already prepared. So I want you to understand that see, God knows what needs to be heard. Amen. He knows what needs to be heard. And the thing about it is, is we're hearing we're hearing speculation. We're hearing people forecasting, thinking, okay, well, the world is about ready to come to an end. You know, look at the choices that we have for us. Uh, being uh, running for president, we have it's about picking the, the the less of the worst, right? Picking the picking the less worst of the two. That's what it comes down to, right? Is these neither of these choices I'm really running out and feeling great about going to the election polls for? Neither of them. And you got to understand. So as we hear, we hear people talking about. Well, this is going to probably be the end of the world, and you hear different things going on. And I'm saying you're hearing that speculation that they're going to be trying to revert back to old times where they oppress African American people, and and if you're in if you're living for Christ, you're going to get oppressed. But what I tell you all is this: none of them situations are too strong for the Lord. Somebody, I just want somebody to tell me. Is a gun stronger than the Lord? Yeah. Is a knife stronger than the Lord? Yeah. Is, a, is, is a president or king stronger than the Lord? Yeah. You know, so when you think about it, if, we're, if our trust is in Him, if our trust is in the Lord, it doesn't matter what we see. Whenever Daniel, Daniel's trust was in God, the writing, it was signed. Let no one petition their God for 30 days. It was signed. Right? And it wasn't like he went out and tried to just, just to be an agitator. You understand me? That wasn't his. He was doing what he had already done. What was a practice of his already. Amen. What his already was a practice of his. So he wasn't just going out just trying to cause trouble just to say, okay, well, I know God will show up for me. He was already living that kind of a lifestyle where he was praying. He was petitioning God. And so as a result of that, he didn't say, oh man, this is rough times now. We're living where they just signed a decree that no one could petition any other God but the king. Well, look at the times we're living in. What's going to happen? God doesn't get weak just because it's 2016. He didn't get weak just because that he signed that decree in Daniel's day, let no one petition any other else besides the king for 30 days. He didn't get weak then. God will show himself strong. But we have to be in a position to call on him. Right? We saw that song at the beginning. When you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. And then in his verses, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? So, we got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He carries, he brings so much with him. He's the God that can call something out of nothing and allow it to exist. That's the power of his might. That's the kind of power he has. He doesn't have to have materials to make something. He can just call it into existence. God can say, let there be, and there will be. That's the power of his might. He can say, he can do them things. He can, so when we're talking about being strong in the Lord, let's make sure that we rest assured in his strength. Because when you know that you are powerful and you know that you serve a powerful God, it may change the way you walk. It may change the way that you view things. Don't view yourself as weak and feeble. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. His might. Be strong. 
Now, it doesn't matter. See, some people, they look at situations and they look at circumstances. Right? Some of you may have been in a, a situation, there's a saying, uh, a rock in a hard place. You ever felt like that, Dawn? Dawn, you ever felt like you were in a rock in a hard place? You ever felt like you were being pressed and squeezed to the point where you didn't know what to do? Anybody in here ever felt that way before? Amen. 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 Right? Huh? But see, we're not alone when we serve the Lord. And you might say, hey, listen, I feel that way. And why does he even allow you to feel that way sometimes? So you can learn to trust in him. You can learn where your strength comes from. But sometimes you felt like you're a rock in the hard place. You feel like that man, I just don't know which, which way to turn. I don't know how this is going to get done. I don't know how this is going to happen. But see, in Philippians 4 and 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things. See, if I have Christ on board, I can do all things. I know people, I know the naysayers and the haters are telling me, I can't. I can't do this. I know those who have been apprehensive about doing it themselves are telling me that I can't do it. I know those who don't wish me well is telling me that I can't do it. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. So I don't have to worry if I can do it, the only thing that I got to be focused on, am I pleasing God enough so I can do it? I don't have to be working about, can I do it? I know that the ability's locked there. The power is there for me to do it. But am I locked into the power? Is everybody hearing me? If you hear me, stand on your feet and give us a break. I want you to catch the essence of what I'm telling you. You can comprehend. You can be born in the conqueror. You can overcome if you're locked into the power. If you're locked into it, you can overcome it. But if you're going to sit down on the power and you're not going to tap into it, you're not going to get it. Amen. Amen. You're not going to get it. I can do all things through Christ. That should make somebody just jump out of their seats and be glad about, you know, that you have that ability, that where you can do all things through Christ. You have that. Preach. Why would you feel? He said you can do nothing. You're going to be you're going to be weak and feeble all your life, and you can do nothing. He said I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's what it's being said. That should be very encouraging. Amen. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. But I got to be locked in. I got to be invested. I gotta have a relationship. I have to have a lifeline. I gotta have a connection, a communication with him. See, there's gonna there's gonna be opposition. There's gonna be people out there that's trying to work against you. There's going to be. You're going to have an adversary. You may have an adversary on the job. You may have an adversary, and, and a next door neighbor might be an adversary. You're going to have them. There's going to be people that's going to come at you for, but for no other reason. They may not like you because of the life that you stand for. Because they know that there's something different about you. And sometimes they, they are so out of place saying, well, they think that they're better than us. Or they think that that's their conscience getting to them. Right? We are going to carry ourselves with a certain level. The Bible says we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We are going to carry ourselves a certain way. And if somebody thinks that we are acting better than them, that may mean because they already feel inferior to you. You understand me? Because that's maybe the way that they feel because they see you carrying yourself at a certain level. But when you carry yourself that way, and you don't even, you may not say, you may not have did anything to work against anybody, but they automatically despise you and hate you because they see that the life that you're living. But get this, 1 John 4 and 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. We overcome them. We're overcoming the haters. 
We're overcoming our adversary. You understand me? We are overcoming them. So don't, don't give them too much attention. Right? Give God that attention. Don't give them the attention. We will overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm going to read that latter part again. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You understand me. So when you go out here and people are working against you, just realize you have already overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So that means that what it's saying, do you got Jesus in you? Because if you got Jesus in you, it's greater than the adversary in the world. It's greater than the adversary. So we don't have to worry about the haters, the naysayers, the adversaries. Because we got the greater power. We got the greater power. We have the greater power. We have the greater power. Let's say that, let's say that together. We have the greater power. We have the greater power. That's right, and that's in Jesus. That's in Jesus. You know, back in the day, U.S. was considered pioneers. We had the atomic bomb. The atomic bomb. Oh, my, my, my. Right? The atomic bomb. And it could cause some destruction from what I was told. The atomic bomb. We had such great power. And then you hear people talking about these countries over there got nuclear warfare. These people over here have that, right? Then we hear about other things that are going on in the world. But see, the thing about it is, we got to realize again who we serve. Who we serve. In Isaiah 54 and 17, it reads, No weapon that can be an atomic bomb, that can be an AKA, that can be a knife, that could be a gun, that could be somebody's tongue, it could be a ball, it could be a ball bat, it could be a pipe. It could be wet, wet weapon, but it says no weapon, no weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. No weapon. So that means that their tongue, they could be behind it having their old good boy conversation. Back in the back, talking about, oh, you see that person over there talking about you. Having a conversation about you that you're unaware of, but God's aware of it. God is aware of it. Having a conversation trying to work against you. You understand me. But no weapon, no weapon, right, formed against thee shall prosper. So that means it's not going to work. Whether it's tongue, whether it's some kind of physical object, it's not going to work. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. You understand me? God's going to, he has that under control. You know, he's got it under control. This is the heritage of the servants, servants of the Lord. See, see what I mean? That's why I say we got to be connected to the power. We have to be connected. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. The servants, we got this power. Right? We have it. We have these treasures and earthen vessels. You understand me? We have the power. We got to be connected, though. We got to be connected to the power. We used to sing a, a song back in the day. Back in the day. Power, power, wandering working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonderful working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I, somebody got to catch this. Somebody got to catch it. I'm telling you. You better, if come on, don't be no dead church on me. Somebody got to catch this. Hallelujah. Don't let it be like Lot. Who out there can hear me? Who can hear me? Amen. Hallelujah. Who can hear me? Amen. Don't you be like Lot. Get out like what? Righteous. Fool. Hallelujah. Don't you be dead. Don't be dead. You have your spirit alive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. 
Don't you don't 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 be dead. Don't be dead. Be alive. Be alive in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Second Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 7. Again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what comes or goes. Do you understand me? It's always been something that came and went. Through the, through the land of time. Through, through the line of time, there's always been something that has came and gone. Back in the day, we're going to just talk about health a little bit. Back in the, it used to be polio. Smallpox. Everybody hear me? Always something. Polio, smallpox. Right? Uh, hepatitis B. Flu. Getting there. <laughs> right? All right? Flu. All kinds of things. All kinds of things that has came up. But we're still here. God's people are still here. And then the devastating one nowadays, AIDS. But, you know, but see, there's always something coming up. Now, that's, that's health issues. Then we can talk about oppression. There was slavery. You don't have to just go to the African-American slavery. We can just go to, we can go to the, the slavery of Israel, the, the, the Jewish people that was in bondage. We go there. African-American slavery. The Holocaust. There's always been some kind of oppression of some sort. There's always something. But when you call on Jesus, come on now. What can happen when you call on Jesus? Come on, don't be a dead church. When you call on Jesus, what happens? He will answer Come on, when you call on Jesus. He will answer Better believe it. You better believe that in your heart because it's going to be a time where if you don't got that, you're not going to have anything. If you don't have it, you're not going to have anything. You better believe it. You better believe it in your heart. You better believe it in your heart because there's going to be a time. There's going to be a time where that's all you're going to have to call on. But then get this stuff. God should be your beginning and end anyway. He should be your beginning and end. You start calling on him, and you finish by calling on him. So 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I care what comes up. Always something is trying to come around. Always. Always. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. If you're walking around wondering if you should leave your house, if you're wondering about this, you know, is this going to be the last election or whatever, you're not praying enough. You're not reading your Bible enough. You aren't in the Word of God. God don't give us the spirit of fear. And perfect love casts out all fear. You understand? Let me hear somebody say amen. 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 Come on. You know, we don't have the spirit of fear when we serve God. We don't have that. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Power, that's what we got. Those who don't have the spirit of fear sit home at, with anxiety saying, I don't know if I should leave the house today. I don't know if I should leave the house today. But he gives us the spirit of power, so I'm going to leave the house today. And wherever I go, I'm going to command whatever spirit's there to be susceptible to the spirit that I have inside of me, which is Jesus Christ. You understand me? Where I go, I'm going to dominate because I have the spirit of Christ in me. The spirit of Christ isn't coming second. He's Alpha and Omega. Alpha being number one. You understand me? So where I go, my spirit's going to be dominant. You understand me? Where you go, your spirit should be dominant. Mm -hmm. You don't sit back and just, your spirit should be dominant. So you don't have to worry about where you go. Your spirit should control Amen. what it is that you do. Great. And it should take over. Woo! It should take over. But you got to be prayed up. This is to the service of the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Amen. You understand me? You understand me? You make sure that you are in the heritage of the servants of the Lord. 
that means you got to be in the family. You got to be in the family. Heritage. You got to be in the family. So you make sure. But he doesn't give us the spirit of fear. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Sound mind. You trust in him. You trust in him and you trust in him. And then again, you trust in him. And when you show yourself to him, draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. That's what his word says. So we got to draw closer to him. He'll draw closer to us. We got to do that. We have to do that. Psalms 46 and 46, verses 1 and 9 and 10. God is our refuge. What does that mean? We hide in him? Is that what that refuge is? Huh? Sanctuary, refuge? Huh? Mm -hmm. We hide in him. God is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength. A very, a very, a very, not a little, not a some, not some, not somewhat, a very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. Verse 9. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. See, see these armies, people out there talking whatever they're going to talk about. This is going to happen with the, the children of God. This is what's going to happen. They're going to go back to the days of old. God, you don't have to have an army on your own. God is an army in himself. He can do this. He burneth the chariots in, fi in the fire. But this is what we got to do, though. This is what we got to do. Verse 10. This is what we got to do. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know I'm God. Don't go running to other places. Don't be going over there, running over there. Don't be running over there. Be still. Stay in God. Don't leave God. Stay in God. Don't leave Him. Be still. Be still. And know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the heathen. And I will be exalted in the earth. He will be exalted. See, the thing about it is, is even when people do what they try to do all their wrong, it comes back whenever he squeezes them enough. Either they're going to be in pain and agony and like all distress, or it gets them to realize where their strength is coming from. But he will make his presence known. His presence will be known. Psalms 20, verses 6 and 7. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. Are you one of his anointed? Did you hear that? Now, now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. You all catch that. The Lord will save his anointed. He will save his anointed. He will hear from heaven and save with his right hand. With his right hand. Now listen to this. Don't be trusting. We I told you all before. People out there trusting in guns. People trusting in different material things. Don't you put your trust in that stuff. Don't you put that trust in that stuff. Mm -mm. Verse 7. Some trust in chariots. And some in horses. But we will remember the name of of the Lord our God. That's where our trust is. My trust isn't going to be in some man-made thing, what he did. 
Because there might be another man that's, that's smarter and more intelligent than him that comes out with a better or more powerful weapon. And, I, and I'm putting my trust in this guy's weapon. He's a man. You understand me? I'm not. I'm putting my trust in God, who there's no one stronger than, there's no one that's going to outdo him, there's no one that's going to defeat him. My trust is going to be in God. You know that that money that we like so much, and God we trust. That's what my trust is going to be. Is in God. I'm not trusting in all this other stuff. If God leads me to a particular system or a particular person, well, thanks be to God. He gave me my answer. But my trust is in God. Amen. My trust is Praise in God. Jesus. In God, we trust. My trust is in God. 